I'm James H. Barker, a photographer. I've been a photographer all my life. I moved to Bethel, Alaska in 1974 and actually met my to-be wife, Robin, in 1975. I walked in the door of a party and there was Jim Barker. And we started uh, kind of talking and getting to know each other. After I had moved in, Jim pulled out the box full of gardener photographs of that family with nine children. And he just went through the photographs and talked about them. And um, I, I looked at them and I, I loved the photographs of the children being children and the whole family dynamic. And I distinctly remember saying to myself, this guy's a keeper. Uh, somehow the word got out that I was a photographer and the Yukon Kuskokwim Health Corporation, they wanted to produce a booklet. In doing the shooting around at a couple villages and such, I could clearly see this was a, a very interesting place and interesting people that I wanted to work with. I've always been impressed with how particularly working in the villages, that people are kind of aware of what others' needs are, even though I'm kind of in some ways like an intruder. Uh, I'm, I'm a visitor. I was interviewing a friend and she said, you know, we are always getting ready. We're always getting ready to go fishing, to go, getting ready to go hunting. You know, it was just a constant preparation for whatever was going to come. Always getting ready. The late Mary Pete uh, wrote this about me. When he worked among us, he did seem to immerse himself, to be everywhere without getting in the way. His unobtrusive style showed in the photographs. In his work, he captured Yupix unabashedly being Yupix. It's just an extraordinary place and a people to get to know and be living near and, and to document. Hey, 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 look, I don't need you in What now you gonna call talk to me? Kidaki. for critical moments where there's a, an expression, a movement and such that will talk about what they're doing and I kind of look for that particular moment. And when I'd photographed the Selma March in 1965, I realized that, well, I really wanted to be more involved in documenting people. Just took one Leica and a b bunch of film, and there were thousands of people marching. I thought of myself as a participant observer in the middle of the march, photographing the people that were in the march, but not being outside of the separate from the march. I've always kind of felt that this was kind of a more intimate view. I was kind of studying the people who were walking in the march, but then also looking past them at times, seeing the faces of the observers as we were marching by. It was just kind of moving, the variety of people that were there. 
people that had traveled from all throughout the whole United States to get there. I've always kind of used Lycas, even used them at times down in Antarctica. The National Science Foundation allows a certain number of creative people to go down. I wasn't there to photograph glaciers, but to document the people themselves. And they said, gee, we've never had that before. <laughs> Uh, they know that their time down there is going to be limited and they're working like hell to try to get as much done in the time that they have. I mean, it's a very active place. He's really working on the composition. Here's this black line and that's, that's the edge of the film. So that's exactly what he saw through the viewfinder. So I think there's something special about observing the people and what they're doing at the same time that he's thinking about the aesthetics of the composition. Black and white worked well for documentary. The black and white was kind of a stronger image. He is most himself when he's behind the camera and that sound is in some ways who he is. God, these have never been looked at for a long, long time. <laughs>